guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about music. So I actually asked you guys on Instagram quite a few months ago now, I'm very sorry that it's taken me so long to get around to filming this video, but I asked you uh, if you had any questions relating to music, obviously music as it relates to ballet. So let's just get straight into it. So Annie Project 365 asked, I'd love to hear about different styles and different composers. So what I thought would be fun and probably also quite useful is if I go through kind of like a very mini abbreviated version of like a classical music timeline because I think it's really interesting and I think it can shed some light on some of the music that we dance to and where it came from and kind of the evolution. timeline quite concise I'm going to start with the Renaissance period but just for reference the medieval period was the musical period that came before the Renaissance and you may well recognize these periods because they're not only used to refer to classical music but also used for art for architecture and of course later for dance so the Renaissance period was from 1400 to around 1600 and the Renaissance period was obviously an important time for all of the arts and music being no exception so the Renaissance period was when the very first origins of ballet begun however ballet really came into its own in the next period which is the Baroque period period went from 1600 to 1750, around 1750. These are obviously very vague, it wasn't like one year in Renaissance period and the next year it's the Baroque period. Obviously there was kind of a transition period but in order to talk about it we need to put dates somewhere so just take these as a kind of vague reference point. So in the Baroque period we start to have many of the very very famous composers who are still loved and celebrated today. People like Vivaldi and towards the end of the Baroque period Bach as well. Now I want to remind you that these classical music periods do mainly refer to what we could call like high art music, so classical music. But it's also worth remembering that at the same time as all these periods are happening, there is also folk music. And something else to bear in mind is that there was also a divide between sacred music, so music composed for religion or to celebrate God, and then secular music, so music not for religious purposes. And Baroque composers quite often had some of both, although there are some composers who compose a lot more sacred music because the church would commission big works. And that is also true of the classical period as well. So to link together the Baroque musical period with ballet, Louis XIV, who I'm sure you've all heard of if you've studied anything to do with the history of ballet, during his reign that was kind of when a lot of ballet became codified, written down, and that was right in the middle of the Baroque period. So ballet at that time, of course, would have been danced to Baroque music. Baroque period and we move into the classical period. So the classical period was from around 1750 to around 1810 and it is funny that we use classical music to refer to all of these different musical periods but there is one specific period that is called the classical period. So many many of the famous classical music composers that you will have heard of are from the classical period. So for example, Mozart and then Beethoven. Beethoven actually kind of paved the way from the classical period into the romantic period and kind of opened the door. And there are lots of differences obviously between Baroque music and classical music, even though classical music is obviously based on Baroque music, but there became a little bit more flexibility in terms of the rules that were used for writing Baroque music. There were very specific structures, there were very specific key signatures, there were very specific chords that should be used, harmonies that should be used in a certain order. And the classical music period started to play with those a little bit. And music started to be written for bigger and bigger groups of musicians. Now even today we have concerts of Baroque orchestras, but it's a smaller group of musicians than a classical orchestra 
which again is slightly smaller than a romantic orchestra, which is absolutely huge, can be even up to a hundred musicians playing at the same time. Melodies themselves became even more important within the whole work and there are many 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 more things which changed but as I'm just doing an overview I'll leave it there. So in the classical period ballet had very much moved from the courts of Louis XIV into theatres. So ballet during the classical period had really become a show with elaborate scenery, costumes, etc, etc. And of course, we have to remember that during the classical period, it was also an amazing time for opera. So then we come to the Romantic period. And the Romantic period is really from around 1810 to 1910. And of course, the Romantic period is absolutely where ballet comes into its own. One of the most famous composers of the Romantic period is, of course, Tchaikovsky. And then there are many, many, many other famous composers during the Romantic period. Chopin is another example. And so what actually happened to the music? What was its evolution from classical to romantic. So one of the big things that happened, as I said, the orchestra got bigger, many, many more sounds. The percussion section in particular grew a lot and in general the music became more dramatic, which is why I said that Beethoven had kind of opened the door for that romantic period to begin because a lot of Beethoven's music is very dramatic and he plays a lot with dynamics, which is something that, again, in romantic music is very, very common. You might go from double forte to pianissimo, which is basically going from really, really loud to really, really quiet <laughs> very quickly within half a count. And what that does to us as humans is it actually affects us more emotionally. So where classical music can also be very emotional and it can be extremely beautiful and it can really move us, it is in a different way to the way that romantic music can really take us on a roller coaster of emotions within one symphony or within one ballet or within one opera. So as I said, from the Baroque period to the classical period, things got a little bit more flexible in terms of structure, in terms of melody and in terms of harmony. The same thing continued to happen into the Romantic period. So again, there was even more flexibility in terms of melody. The harmonies became a little bit more chromatic, which means that they could sound a little bit less harmonious to the ear, but that was always for dramatic effect or to create that kind of tension. And also we get a lot more layering of different rhythms. So for example, it's very common, and Tchaikovsky did this a lot, to layer a triplet over a steady four beats. And basically it gives this feeling of like the music pulling. It's like creates this tension of the steady beat underneath and then the triplet on top. It kind of makes us feel like we're going forward, 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 and it gives the music more movement, which of course was very, very important for ballet music. And so of course we know that during the Romantic period, the most famous ballets were created and there was this beautiful collaboration that took place between Tchaikovsky and Maurice Petipa, who was a famous ballet master and choreographer. And so most of the big ballets that you know were created during the Romantic period. So Swan Lake, Nutcracker, Sleeping Beauty, Giselle, they're all from the Romantic period. So then from the Romantic period, uh, different people call the next period of music by different names. I personally learned it when I was studying music as the Nationalist period and I just want to say actually that you may have noticed that lots of these periods begin at the turn of a, cent a new century or like in the 10 years after the turn of the century and I find that incredibly interesting. That cannot be a coincidence, but somehow at the turn of the century when human beings are, I feel like, really aware of being in a new century and this psychological or philosophical change that is reflected in the arts. And so anyway, coming back to <laughs> the beginning of the 1900s, it was a very, very interesting period where what used to be just folk music and very much separated from classical music or high art music began to mesh. And this had happened before. You know, classical music composers have taken ideas and inspiration 
from folk to music for a long, long time, but it became even more prevalent, I think, and lots of the melodies from the nationalist period really do represent the countries that the composers are from. So for example, Prokofiev was from that era, and you can really hear some very nationalistic sounds within Prokofiev's music. Sibelius was another one, and not only can you hear the sounds in the music, but they're writing music almost for the country and to represent the country and to honour the country. And again, during the transition from the Romantic to this new period at the beginning of the 20th century, we see this shift in composition and we also see a big shift in choreography because that was also when the Ballet Russe was founded and they were doing some very groundbreaking things, especially in the decade starting from 1910. It was really a very, very creative time, both in the world of classical music and for ballet as well. So I'm going to leave it there for now in terms of a little classical music history lesson. But if you're interested, I highly recommend you do some more research and learn about this. I personally love learning about different composers, different time periods how the music evolved, same thing with dance, how each choreographer built on what had come before and then were able to create something new. It's really, really fascinating. And if you don't know about the Ballet Russe, definitely do a bit of research on that company because it was, as I said, an incredible time for dance and music.